Our next program is the self-directed highway maintenance teams program from Oregon. Art Alaniz, Al Alaniz and Dale Allen will present. And Art Alaniz will start off. Uh, thank you. I am Art Alaniz and uh, I work for the Department of Transportation in Oregon. And I am here to tell you why self-directed work teams are a better way to maintain your highways. In 1985, uh, well, I first of all, I live in South Central Oregon. Uh, the region that I work in is 300 miles long, 200 miles wide. The Columbia River Gorge is to the north that borders Washington and Oregon to the California border to the south. I have rainforest to the uh, west of the region that I work at and the high desert to the east. And during the summer and winter months, there are tourists everywhere. <laughs> I went to work at, uh, for the department in 1985. At that time, like everyone else, when I went to work, I checked my brain in at the door and the boss took care of everything. The, the boss was the kingdom and he was also the king of his kingdom. We used his, his stuff. We used his equipment. He gave us directions. He gave us orders daily. We worked in his borders. We worked in his section borders, and we were not allowed out of those section borders. In fact, we viewed then that the public was the enemy. We, we protected the highways from the public. <laughs> okay? Suggestions were, uh, we weren't allowed to make suggestions. Uh, uh, a brief story, I went to work in Eastern Oregon. I used to apply the paint stripes on the highways. And I had a, uh, I found out something that could save the taxpayers money and we would be more productive. And the boss at that time said, hey, the status quo is pretty nice around here. We don't need any improvements at this time. Okay. Today, you would find seven area managers that took the place of 22 working supervisors. We are coaches. We care about the people. We, uh, we're, we help these people, uh, the workers, and, uh, and we're a resource center for the workers as area managers. Instead of leaving your brains at, at the job, we encourage them to take them with them now. We encourage innovations. We encourage them to bring their ideas forward. Recently, we, if you've been keeping up with the south central part of Oregon, we have been hit with a rash of earthquakes. Before, I think that the atmosphere would have been that we would have to, as a supervisor, call the other sections to ask for their help. There were literally, the phones were ringing off the, phone, off the hook waiting to assist us down there from, the, from our region. We view the public as our customer now. We share equipment. We share resources. 1992, we experienced one of the worst winters in Oregon's history that I've lived through anyways. And uh, uh, we needed more equipment and we needed more manpower. There were uh, areas that were caught up in their areas and they called to see if we needed any assistance uh, down in Southern Oregon. Quite different than from the past. Proof, I know self-directed work teams are working there recently was a poll taken where 75% of local governments said that they thought we were doing a good job and we're also saving money. We saved $1 million in one year when we went to self-directed work teams, a little over $1 million. We saved it through the reduction of managers from 22 to 7. We saved it in equipment downtime due to better planning by the work teams and the managers and overtime. What does this mean to you as taxpayers? There are over 3 million road miles 
in the United States and thousands of workers. And that's why I know self-directed work teams is a better way to maintain your highways. Thank you. Thank you. We'll both answer questions. All right. Start with Max Sherman. Would you say that all seven self-directed teams in Oregon are working well? There's uh, actually 22 self-directed work teams, seven area managers uh, like Art, uh, and no, they're not all working well. The, uh, the culture change for a crew to work without a boss is large. It's traumatic for an employee. I remember, uh, I think it was on October 21st morning, they showed up to work and no boss was there. And some of them, uh, I think, thought, man, they can play cards all day today. But it was a big, it was a big change, and we're not there yet with everyone. Yes. To follow up to that question, um, um, if you are not there, what steps are you taking to get there? Are you contemplating reintroducing supervisors? Actually, the I'd like to let Art answer this too, but the crews probably wouldn't stand for that now after they've got a taste of of operating on their own and taking some initiative and getting some credit, uh, there's a little groundswell of support for this program. But what we're doing specifically is this last uh, two months ago, we put on staff a professional uh, that's trained in bringing teams up to high performance. It was a big decision for the state of Oregon. We put on 10 of these people that have degrees in uh, master's levels and they're working with our toughest crews. Uh, they met some of our crews two weeks ago, and I, I see that person being able to uh, bring them around. Maybe Art has to add to that. Yeah, you, I, I've worked in three different locations as an area manager, and I have yet to have, I have, uh, I supervise three crews, and I have yet to have all three crews functioning at a level that you would might uh, say that is a high performance team. But we're, we're going in that direction. I believe self-directed uh, directness is just a form to get the high performance. And we're not there yet. Got And then Luis. Uh, Mr. Allen, you have been a champion of this program. And I assume that someday you might wish to go do something else, fish or, or uh, <laughs> do a few other things, smell the roses. What happens after the, the big champion is no longer around? Yeah, that, that question has come up, and I was uh, glad to hear the governor this morning talk about the, it, the fact that the, some of the programs that she has put into place, she's getting very broad-based support for those changes in government. And I do not see the administration change, the governor change, or the director of the department changing this, this groundswell of better government. I think it's really embedded in Oregon. Uh, the other, my counterparts in the other parts of Oregon uh, are moving rapidly towards this. The, their only question is to, if they want to do like we did three years ago and to jump into it all at <coughs> once or whether they want to move into it uh, as managers retire because it does require displacing people. It's my understanding actually that... Uh, I want to understand the, uh, the scope of decisions that are made by the teams. Uh, are they given a, a territory and a budget and a work scope and, and told this is for you to execute, prioritize, or just how would you describe the scope of authority of those teams you, you, to do their... You came very close to describing our unionized, and so do you get into the teams handling their own discipline. That has to be worked out yet with the union, but the union sees the benefit, if you will, of this type of uh, organization, and they are not opposed to trying to work some language in a contract for that. Self-discipline, um, they do hire. They do, uh, uh, it's interesting, when we used to hire maintenance workers, a typical, quote, good candidate would be a long-haul truck driver. We feel we can train truck drivers now. We hire people that can communicate, people that have uh, ability to work in a group, and uh, there's quite a few uh, uh, women now working on our workforce, and we believe they understand the importance of diversity on these teams because it really makes it work. So diversity on these teams because it really makes it work.